When building a stadium, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club wanted a venue that embodies the essence of the team and the spirit of their fans. They looked to HPE to create an unforgettable fan experience, one of the smartest, most connected stadiums in the world with three million visitors a year. HPE technology in every corner of the building, all flexible and connected. Cashless transactions, 1.3 million square feet of arena and real-time sales updates. Technology won't stand in the way of the game, it enhances it. How did they do it? With HPE Services, next level in IT. HPE Services acted as the club's advisory partner on Edge Technologies, providing advice, design, and build services on the stadium's wired and wireless infrastructure. The services relationship continues today with a modular Edge to Cloud service that offers a holistic approach to optimizing the entire IT environment. When you engage with HPE, you receive a personalized experience from your assigned team of HPE experts who create solutions based on your unique needs. HPE ensures time on IT is time well spent. We augment your staff and expertise, optimize your IT investment, and cut your time to resolution, bringing a superior experience to the fans. Complete coverage, enhanced incident management, performance optimization, and software asset management. In Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the winners are the fans, and the success is measurable. Fans stay longer and have a 95% satisfaction rate. No matter your business, as part of your team, HPE Services can help you achieve your objectives. Welcome and thank you for attending the session. Appreciate it. That great video, right? I mean, uh, fantastic, you know. Tottenham Hotspur, there's Sanjeev Katwa, who, uh, who heads the technology for that, is here, so you'll get to hear from him. Uh, it's important to hear from the customers, so that, that's fantastic. Um, it's the partnership that we really like where we designed with them, uh, where the fan experience, what you saw is happening end to end, right? So it's, it's fantastic. Um, so today we have got a session where we want to talk about operating model, right? And um, which is something that people ignore sometimes. You know, we get caught up in, in fancy stuff. Not that we shouldn't get caught up in fancy stuff. I mean, all the keynotes that you heard were really good. Uh, we are into AI, we are into hybrid cloud, lots of different things. But at the same time, how is it going to get done and who's going to do it? Do you have the right people? All that kind of stuff, right? So, but all throughout today, we are going to use uh, some sports analogy. That's why we started with uh, this video. Um, we like sports. Sports people like to win and we like to win. It's the same thing, right? So uh, we will go through the session uh, we will uh, relate to sports as much as possible, okay? Okay, so um, I live in Houston. My uh, eldest son uh, played soccer or football, right? Uh, not, he's not playing in a Premier League, but he was playing, you know, college football, right? And uh, it is quite interesting because those of you who know Houston, it's hot, it's humid, uh, and I like you to come and visit Houston because we have our head office there and it's really nice and shiny and everything. And Antonio spent a lot of money, so we, we really enjoy. Uh, but that all said, don't come during summertime because it's 95 degrees, it's hot. Uh, if you thought Vegas is hot, it's also humid. And the mosquitoes are like half an inch big and about eight of them get together and carry you away. So just avoid the summertime and come any other time. But more importantly, um, as I said, my son played soccer, and um, it's a very uh, diverse uh, uh, set of communities in Houston, right? You get all varieties of people, great food, but it also, when it came to soccer, there's sort of two DNAs in there. Right? You had a lot of South American kids whose DNA is about individual brilliance. Right? So that's why you have got the Diego Maradonas of the Lionel Mercies of the world. Take the ball, shh, goal. Right? I mean, that's what they were very good at. And they played during the weekends with the family, so they came in with that 
scoring, all of them were strikers, right? Defense was not their strength, right? Then you had these Europeans, because Houston being um, a very energy uh, capital of the world, there were a lot of Europeans in there, and their kids were very collaborative, very passing game. I mean, you, you watch a German, you know, Dutch game, you fall asleep sometimes because by the time they pass the ball, come on guys, get it going, right? So they were very passing game. And the interesting thing is there were two different skill sets. And when you had a coach who could take that, who could strategize, who could harness, who can make them collaborate, who can also make the team adapt to what's going on in the field, you had a fantastic result. Fantastic results. And why I say that is the coach made a huge difference. And when you are going through a transformation journey, we at HPE see ourselves as the coach. Be there for you, help you understand your skills, what do you want to do next, where you are in the transformation journey, how do you be successful? Just like in the football field, somebody wants to win, we want to make sure you win and you get the outcomes uh, you want to get. And when you're going through a transformation process, um, it's not like in field, everything is changing, everything is becoming digital. There are really three things you look at to get you through the transformation. You look at your people, do you have the right people who can take you through the transformation? Do they have the right skill set? Do they have the right mindset? Uh, are they adaptable? Then you look at the processes you have. The processes you had in the past may not be the processes you want in the future, right? Because as, technology, as you adapt lots in technology, the processes that you want for the future are different. Then you look at technology. Obviously, you are, we all are using technology to get better. All three need to be orchestrated in a way that you can get the outcomes you want. So this is where the operating model becomes very key. If you want to achieve your digital ambitions, you never forget how you want the operating model to be. And as this slide says, 90%, when Gartner interviewed 90% of the people, the survey really indicated they wanted an operating model change. We do a lot of this. We, we will have Sue Preston uh, here up talking about what happens with the customers. But almost 100% of the customers look for an operating model change. I believe last year when we had a discussion here, I believe the most important thing for any transformation is the sponsorship that you have from your hierarchy. Your CEO, your C-suit really support you all the way with sponsorship to make the transformation happen. The second most important thing is the operating model. Who is going to drive that transformation? So it's, it's very, very important uh, we look at the operating model, make sure that operating model can take it in ways to transform things, and that suits the new, not the old. Couple of more things. I think reimagining the operating model the way you want is a true test of leadership, right? Because sometimes you have IT ops, for example, and those people have been with you for 10, 20 decades, and when the Everything is changing to the new. Maybe you are going into a hybrid world. It is always hard to let go some of this. Or it's always hard to bring in new talent, new way of thinking into the organization. So you really, really um, need to look at your operating model, and that's key. The Operating model is, as I said, is key to, uh, key to success, right? And um, we at HPE uh, go through transformation discussions with customers all the time. This is, this is our bread and butter. And where we find is 
customers really want to talk to you about how the operating models should be set up. And it's every customer is unique. We don't try to force customers into one side fits all. We really want to understand what the customers want to achieve, how they want to achieve, what is the pace they want to achieve, right? When you go through a transformation, people do it two ways, right? People sometimes take the transformation project as a major project over two, three year period. It's the company's DNA. They would say, hey, we are going on on this transformation project. It's going to th take three years. Like the fan experience at Tottenham, right? They're like, this is the fan experience we want to get. It's going to be a two year project. We are going to build a big stadium. I mean, you would hear from Sanjeev how big the stadium is, what, how nice it is. So it's a long term program and the CEO and the CFO supports you to get there. Some corporations do it differently. I mean, you may be doing it differently. It's an incremental based process. You are making incremental changes. You are adapting as you go along. It doesn't matter which way you take the transformation. You want to make sure that operating model fits into those changes you are going to make those future that you're going to achieve. So in either case, you really want to relook at with HPE on the operating model, right? So HPE, as you know, has a big services organization. A lot of things you heard the last couple of days, services organization leads it. And because we spend a lot of time with customers, there are good methods and and expertise that stays in the company that helps customers with their life cycle, transformation life cycle. And once you have done the transformation, you also go into an operating mode. So you need to work about, think about what that operating model is during the transformation and day one and beyond. This stage, rather than me talking a lot about all this, what we would want to see is, with our customers, what are the examples that's happened in the marketplace? How has customers changed their transformation, the, uh, uh, their, their transformation journey? And how have they used AI to make those uh, operating model changes? So I'll invite uh, Sue Preston, who is the VP for, and general manager for HP Services for Advisory and Professional Services. She has a fantastic team. Not only she's a great leader, but she has a fantastic team with extensive experience. So I'll let her go through some of the uh, things. I didn't give you, you a hug, oh, Sue. No. Yeah. <laughs> thank we you. We always talk about this hug, so I want to make it. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you um, for your time. So. What, what I wanted to do was just share with you, so I run Worldwide Advisory and Professional Services, and you've heard over the last couple of days with the keynote, so where we're focused on the key uh, pillars for the digital enterprise. What I wanted to focus on is how do we bring that to life when we're engaging with our customers across the whole portfolio at HPE, and then go through some of the examples with those customers whether it's at the edge, so we're looking at, um, let's say, for instance, within the uh, telco industry. So if we're looking at the, you know, the amount of uh, connected devices that are at the edge, and then the amount of data that is being collated, and then where does that, um, you know, what is the right uh, destination for that data that's coming and being connected at the edge? We then um, look at the uh, cloud, hybrid cloud platforms. So where are customers with HPE GreenLake uh, looking for that destination for the, for the hybrid cloud, whether that's in a colo, whether it's on-prem uh, for the customers and it's the right solution for them. The other key element then is um, security. So looking at cybersecurity and looking at de-risking um, from a cyber resilience point of view, how do we bring that together for our customers as well? to ensure that it's secure. The other element then is sustainability. So sustainability is a catalyst. And you've heard over the last couple of days that organizations that align digital ambition with IT sustainability are two and a half times more likely to be the strongest 
performers. So you've seen you know, that the overall strategy, then the amount of data that's being created, how is that turned into intelligence? And as Pradeep mentioned with AI, what I wanted to do is take you um, through a number of different examples with those customers that we've engaged with. So if I look at uh, some of the, the, the living progress report that was just launched last week as well, there's a great example of a biopharmaceutical customer that was looking at driving uh, drug um, and uh, patient outcomes for, for, for drugs and research. They actually, with the machine learning and um, uh, development platform, reduced their training on GPUs from three days down to three hours. So looking at how that can then improve drugs in the biopharmaceuticals um, industry, which is you know, a fantastic use case example. If I then look at healthcare, let's stay with healthcare. So from an AI point of view um, with robotics, so one of the uh, key challenges in healthcare with surgeons is um, intrusive operations. So therefore looking at how they can use AI and technology you know, the surgeon with a shaky hand, how can it be more precise for how they're, they're, they're doing those operations? So again, with healthcare. If I then look at the insurance um, sector, I was, I was at one of the um, UK government sessions on ethical AI and how they're looking at setting the standards. And it got me thinking on explainative AI. And with the insurance sector, how can they predict disasters? How can they um, look at driving ethical AI to be more productive in predicting these disasters, whether it's hurricanes, tsunamis, um, and then looking at the insurance sector and then helping you know, drive um, a more um, environmental uh, way forward? So that was another good example. And then the other one, if, if you're here and on the floor with the Ryder Cup. So we are um, sponsoring and hosting in September. I'm a personally, I'm a golfer myself. So um, it's great to see that that's what we're, you know, we're driving forward with. And they're gonna set up the most sustainable event. It's in Rome, which again, lovely, gl glorious city. So what I wanted to do is take you through how we engage with customers and partners on looking at their um, operating model and how they get from A to B. So this is the digital journey map. So with all of the um, customer engagements and partner engagements, we're looking across the framework and if you look at experiences. So the first thing is how are you driving ideation on some of those experiences that you want to drive and accelerating outcomes? Now we work across all industries so we can help with our advisory expertise on bringing that to life and how that aligns with digital transformation. We then also look at how platforms on um, the, the, the bottom side there, so how are organizations looking at modernization across those platforms and the engineering uh, capability as well. Then we come to the middle with regards to the operating model and as Pradeep said, you know, looking at the skills and resources that you have internally, there is a, you know, there are various skill shortages. So it's how do we partner with our customers and also with the wider ecosystem in order to transform that operating model. And we have something called the Edge to Cloud Adoption Framework, which is broken down into eight domains. And that is more about the how of taking that ideation of some of those examples of what customers are looking to drive, how they're harnessing disruption, and how they are accelerating outcomes across their organization. It's also about how they are building um, trust from a security point of view, legislation, regulation that's coming out, how are they keeping you know, open and honest and building a resilient um, infrastructure and environment. So for me, I'm absolutely delighted that I can engage with customers and partners to look at how they can harness disruption, accelerate outcomes, and really work across you know, the technologies and the skills. We've got some super um, experience across various industries. And I was just talking to 
uh, one of the customers that's going to be joining Pradeep on stage, around I class some of that expertise as the ninjas, and that they're bringing this development and ideation to bring AI um, and those outcomes together. So at, at that point now, what I would like to do is hand back to Pradeep to take us through the operational experience. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Um, so before we bring in the panel, we have got a great panel today, so we can talk real stuff. Um, but I want to make sure, um, as you are looking at, as you are going through a transformation journey, uh, you are acquiring new technologies, um, you want to make sure you step back and ask the question, who is going to run this? Not only just day one, but beyond. And that's an important question to ask, right? Because it, somebody needs to take care of the environment, make sure the environment is tip top and it's continuously optimized in a way that will help. As Sue said, you may have certain skills. You may want to outsource. You may want to uh, bring some, acquire some skills. You may want to augment with HPE skills to make sure that it's operated really, really well. And you see on this slide, we look at services as a continuum throughout that journey and throughout the life cycle of a customer, right? Not about individual things, it's a continuum of services. And you may have heard uh, during the keynotes uh, a mention of a company called OpsRAM, right? We purchased OpsRAM who have got really AI ops capabilities uh, for a hybrid or a multi-cloud world. And they do everything in a very automated fashion, right? So the discovery phase, the dashboarding, the monitoring, the remediation pieces uh, get done in an end-to-end, -end, very automated basis. And we are we are going to, we've just purchased, so we are going to, we were using OpsRAM before as well. We are going to incorporate into our premier service, uh, Complete Care. At the same time, you'll be able to buy OpsRAM in our service catalog as well, right? So we are looking at everything as a continuum, right? Okay, that all said, uh, it is good time that uh, we want to bring our um, three um, customers three panelists, so you want to hear directly from them. Uh, while they are coming on board, uh, let's also um, run the video for uh, Evil Genius, uh, who are into eSports. Gold video, Chris. Uh, very Not good. Bad. Give them a round of applause. Very good. Thanks for coming in. Um, appreciate it. So, um, all three of you work for companies that focus on winning, right? I mean, it's a winning theme today. Can each of you just give a little bit about yourself and what you do uh, in in your corporation? So, let's start with you, Chris. Uh, my name is Chris Diapolonio. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Evil Geniuses, as you can see. We are an esports and gaming entertainment organization, so we play video games across the globe competitively um, and professionally for millions of dollars. Um, I oversee our tech and data products um, and an innovation team focused really on esports and competitive analytics, um, very similar to Moneyball. <laughs> uh, so, hi, um, I'm Sanjeev Katwa. I lead the technology function at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So, Tottenham Hotspur plays in the Premier League. Um, we, we've been around since 1882, so we've been around a long time. Um, we've just built a brand new stadium a few years back, working with HPE, 62,500 fans come and watch football. And we also a multi-venue. Um, we, we have NFL, uh, we have rugby, we have concerts. Uh, we've just gone through five nights of Beyonce at our venue, which was great. 
Um, so in my, my team, we really look after all of the IT functions. That includes the service desk, network, cybersecurity, et cetera. Uh, we look after the deliver our digital products. So please download our app, because that would be great. Um, and, we, and we have a large business systems team as well. So it's quite a large team looking after all parts of our business. Great. Adam. And I am uh, Adam Jensen, as the slide said, Director of Infrastructure and Operations at Western Canada Lottery Corporation. So Western Canada Lottery Corporation, we manage and operate the lottery for the three provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, as well as our northern territories. So anything that, you know, down in the States you have Powerball. In Canada we've got Lotto Max or 649, so draw base games where you can win you know, millions of dollars, uh, all of our scratch tickets as well that are sold at retail. So any, any lottery product that's sold at retail, uh, we're the ones that manage and operate that lottery business. Thank you, Adam. When we finish, you'll give us the winning lottery numbers, I'm sure, right? I will, yeah. Uh, let's start with you, Chris, right? Um, let me ask you the first question since yeah. you, we, we played the um, great Evil Genius video. You engage with HP services on data transformation project. Uh, why is it important to bring uh, data analytics to the esports industry. Yeah, as you mentioned, winning means a lot uh, to all the organizations up here, especially to us in esports. Um, very similar to traditional sports, finding that edge, that extra two percent, is really going to put us over the top. Um, and for us, you know, we play in games that are built on data and ones and zeros, and we're getting insane amounts of data, 128 frames of data per second. So unlike Tottenham, we're getting it digitally, we don't have to have sensors on our players, we know their speed, their position, the power of their shots, what have you. And from there, you know, we can figure out how to best strategize and make decisions on the virtual playing field. Data is everything, right? Yeah, in that, in that totally. Field. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Um, Sanjeev, coming to you next. And a beautiful stadium, uh, fantastic. Um, we really enjoyed working with you. Um, why was it so important for you to reimagine re your fan experience, right? Because that was key for you, right? And, and what were the fans' reaction when they saw the new stadium? Do you know, um, when we opened up the stadium, we, we opened it up to create an unrivaled fan experience with technology at the heart of what we actually do. So we have technology across every single aspect of the fan experience, be that when you buy something or when you enter the stadium or you connect on your mobile device, um, your audio, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we made a huge investment in opening up a stadium uh, at, in Tottenham at the same site as our existing stadium. So we went from an old stadium of 36,000 capacity, went down to 32,000 just before we uh, knocked it down. Then we built a stadium of 62,500 people. So what you actually have is this significant venue. You saw it on the video how, how big it actually is. But really what we wanted to do is actually make the most of the asset, right? Actually do something with the asset outside of football also. So be that, as I said, with all the other large events that we do, or the fact that we have stadium tours, we're opening up a go-karting track in a few months' time underneath one of our stands. So this way it encourages fans and people just to come to the local area, spend time there, enjoy the experiences. Interesting, from the technology side, we are a key factor for all of those things to work. That's why it's imperative that the operating model that we actually have delivers not just the experience for the 62,500 fans who come in the venue, but also for the guys who are coming for the go-karting or the stadium tour or our walk on the top of the roof. So lots of different things also in our yeah, venue. It, it is lots of different experiences. It is fascinating, right? Because you start with football and you have diversified yeah. your whole thing over, over a lot using technology. And it's great, right? I mean, it's like, you know, ordering the beer and, yeah. the, and the greasy sliders. I mean, still... <laughs> Fantastic, right? Um, very good. Thanks, Sanjeev, and happy that you, you had us as partners. Yep. Come to Adam. Um, I understand you have adapted HP GreenLake, thank you again, um, which is a new way of operating IT uh, along with uh, managed services here, right? And uh, what was your experience uh, transforming your operating model? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, like I said, we, we manage and operate the lottery business. So. You know, you can imagine there's, there's lots of IT involvement, all that, as you were saying before, all that data, all those winning numbers, right? Everybody's playing this. So, you know, I think of us as an IT shop. Our marketing team may not agree with that, but uh, we've got more employees than they do in our organization, so I, I still think we're an IT yeah. shop. So back in 2018, all of our compute was 
well beyond its useful life. So we had to do a massive refresh. And uh, our HPE team reached out to us and you know, positioned the GreenLake you know, offering to us back in 2018. And you know, it's you know, having that predictable cost model uh, was you know, the main driver why we, we started. And when we refreshed all of our compute, um, then also having the flexibility, right? So you can scale up, you can scale down depending on, on needs. So you know, just having that flexibility and consistent cost model was, you know, made my job a lot easier when I had to, you know, go into the CFO's office and explain, you know, why you're having this massive, you know, expensive refresh every, you know, five to seven years. Now we know what that consistent cost is and it makes it a lot easier to predict, yeah. um, you know, what that is every year. Very good. And how about on the managed services side? Do we help you with Yeah, with absolutely. Yeah. So we are, we have managed service with our Electra, so we just, like I said, in 2018, we refreshed all of our compute with GreenLake. Yeah. We just finished replacing all of our storage. So uh, when we brought in Electra, uh, we've got managed service with Electra. So you know, having our technicians to be able to focus on stuff that brings business value. You don't want them to you know do the repetitive things or you know some of the high risk things, right? To update firmware on a storage array, leave that to the experts who have lots of experience doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you, Adam. Um, Sanjeev, again, I know, I know you are a long-standing football club. Maybe you didn't have the best of the premier seasons this year. Uh, but uh, that, putting that aside, what did you mean? Um, what did it actually mean for your organization to work with a company like HP in the full life cycle? Right? Because it's not a one-off engagement. I mean, we, we see this as a partnership with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we use so many different aspects of HPE, right? That's, we, we work with HP on edge, compute, storage, services, and we're also now looking at um, the world of AI okay. as well. Um, you know, we're about to go into the sort of Green Lake Electra, which is, which is great for us as a, as a new offering. But when you look at the services element of it, which is your, your, your function, you know, we, we work with you from the beginning of building the stadium. Your team came on site when we were a building site in, in you know, 2018. So obviously HPE was a new business then. Uh, they came onto a building site um, as a large function and core part of what we do. And they are the main fundamental, I would call it the plumbing, that everything else works upon. So they were part of the entire life cycle of building the stadium, okay? And they worked with all these different third party providers. So for example, you have Schneider here. Um, they work closely with Schneider. We work with Daktronics and LG and all these other companies to, because obviously the network is absolutely important. We have about 1,700 wireless access points at our stadium. We have 63 IT rooms. We have two data centers. We have one data center, which is behind glass, uh, which is very nice. So it tells everybody, look, here's where the technology is. Um, so because we use all these different facets of, of uh, HPE's portfolio, the services element becomes really crucial to us. So not only from when we were building the stadium and when we went live, it's also really important to where we are today because basically HP services augment the existing team I've got. So when we have large events, so we, as I said, we just had five nights of Beyonce in seven. We had three people from the networking part of HP services support my networking team, working the 18 hour days that we were working looking at monitoring and all those sort of things and challenges and issues. And so the way we looked at HP, and I'll always say is we saw HP as a part of our team, and we still do, right? We still see all the guys that work with us. We give them even Spurs stuff to wear and everything else, and they're part of the family. So when you talk about complete care, it's not just about paying, I would say, for insurance policy, let's call it. We really see it as people. And the great thing about choosing HP for us is they were part of the build process from the beginning. And then we had a level of uh, continuation of the same people um, who came along the journey with us. The same people who actually helped us build the stadium and work with us are still working with us today. So I think that's a real testament to, I would say, the organization in trusting those individuals and for us trusting you to continue to support us. Thank you, Sanjeev. It just gives me goosebumps because sometimes we... Um, it looks like a PowerPoint slide or somebody stands up and, and says something, but when it means something to the customer, because partnership is a two-way street, right? Absolutely. You need to feel 
It's not just we are delivering the experience, but beyond that experience, we are there for you. Uh, and also, I think it's important we give our point of view as well, right? Um, you, have, you bring unique propositions, your, your whole field is fairly unique, but we also have some point of view based on what we're hearing from outside. But when you're there and it's a real partnership and at the end of the day, your success matters and you will win the Premier League in the coming years to come with a few, few strikers that you're trying to, uh, to acquire. So great, I, I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, you hear from um, Sanjeev himself. Let's go to Chris. Um, you, you worked with HP Services to incorporate mm -hmm. AI, which is yep. a big deal this, this the, week. Yeah. Everything is about AI. Everybody wants to be in AI, right? Um, yep. Your, your stock price goes up if you add something to end of your, you know, evil genius AI or something uh -huh. like that, Rian. Um, so how did you incorporate that into your operating model? Yeah, it, it started, I think, as Sanjeev was saying, like the, the partnership with HPE, the discovery sessions, the team came out to our facility, talked to the coaching staff, talked to the analysts, our end users of the product, and talked to our engineers and, and data scientists as well. We had systems built right, to do some of the modeling, some of the things that we were working towards for success, but how do we make something that's more scalable, potentially can incorporate open source tooling um, on a private cloud? And that's where like the ML ops and AI team came in and said, look, the data you're bringing in, we can work to build algorithms to help you understand what you're getting, how the players and coaching staff can use it, and then put it into a really nice UI for the, the end user. Because at the end of the day, like these coaches, they want the information, but they're not, they, don't, they don't want a spreadsheet. They want something that looks decent, right? Or they're, they're going to be turned off immediately. And so it's kind of this end-to-end -end journey that we went on with your, with your teams um, to build an AI tool that allows us to look at both voice communication um, of the players in matches, as well as uh, the pick and ban phase of our of our games, and so for those of you who don't know esports, if you think about like if you've ever played dodgeball or or kickball in in gym, right? And there's like you get two captains and you pick the kids from the lineup, right? Imagine there's 160 kids out there, all with different skills, heights, weights, whatever, power, and that is what our coaches go into every game where they have to pick. And the, unfortunately, the kids change every two weeks. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. Sometimes they have a cold, so they don't perform as well, right? That's what happens in League of Legends, and like the permutations are in the billions, so our coaches would never be able to figure out what are the best optimal strategies for us to go forward with, but with AI, we're able to create drafting simulators so that they can practice and prep and get the edge that they need coming into the playoffs. We actually built an MV, the team built an MVP in three weeks at the end of last season so we could get something for our playoff run which was pretty incredible. Um, it was actually useful for us. Results didn't pan out, but decision making was there for our coaching staff. Isn't that fascinating, right? <laughs> oh my God, it is fascinating. Thank you. Uh, is there any AI being used uh, in your Sanjeev, or you have a point? You know, um, it's, it's, that's a really good, good question. We, we, we are, we, we obviously, the ops ramp acquisition has been really interesting, I think. Yeah. And we're, we're looking at what could that mean for us yeah. in terms of AI ops. Yeah. You know, we've got a large venue, and I think it's really important to see where can we sort of do something that's going to help us. So I think yeah. that's really important. Okay. Uh, we, are, we are doing some separate projects with Justin Hotard's team, yeah. Yeah. looking at some different opportunities, yeah. but primarily on the sports side. Okay. Um, mainly just looking at data at the moment. Yeah. Um, and your team have been very helpful with that on the data side too. Okay. Uh, locally in the UK, so I think that's really interesting. And, it, and the great thing about that is it's, it's that combination of working with the group here in the US and then using local expertise, because we do need the local expertise to be on site and work with us on a day-in, day-out basis. I think with AI, you know, it's, it's, we heard a lot about it over the last few days, right? Um, I think things like predictive analysis for us is going to be helpful, uh, on, not only on the sports side, but I think also on the commercial side. Yeah. So, for example, if you sell many thousands of beer in a football match tomorrow. What are we gonna sell in the next game? And how do we relate that to the weather condition at the same time or yeah. the team that was playing, et cetera. Yeah. So you gotta look at those, yeah. I would say, permutations, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? So I think that's gonna be the next stage of how we um, do better in our business as well. 
and how we can actually commercialize. Um, yeah. You know, because that's ultimately, we're about winning, absolutely, but we're also about uh, making sure we make commercial return because that also supports our player acquisition. Yeah. It's, a, it's, the, it's the circle. It's a cycle. Cycle, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and what we found is, I mean, when you combine that information or analytics you get yeah. and the data, the valuable data, combined with something else, like, as you said, weather data with what you're going to sell, um, I think it, it's, it becomes uh, hugely. What we you see as a demo, what we have got for all of you, uh, what, what Justin and Sridevi showed in, um, in their presentation is uh, taking that data and uh, our, our own support data, right? Taking that and combining with AR how to repair the thing. Very Absolutely. Easily. I mean, I think one of the things that we, I want to go back to one of the points about this partnership. You know, we have a, we've, we've been partners with HP for several years now and it, it, it's continued. You know, it's not that we, opened up our venue and we just stopped, right? Yeah. We, we know a lot of people at HP uh, in different business, mod, uh, business areas. Uh, there's quite a few people I've seen outside. We've made the investment to come to the US several times to look at things. Uh, we learn and we continuously learn. So I think it, what's actually helped us with the relationship is also creating that wider uh, group with other you know, in my world, with sporting brands, right? So, you know, Daniel from the Golden State Warriors, Matt from the Cowboys, Michael from Mercedes F1. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know, we talk about these things, right? And yeah. Sue ran a session yesterday where we were speaking about specific areas. And I think we, we have some real common, we might be in three different sports, us guys, but we have the same common issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the great thing about the relationship with HP is we sort of know who to go to now. Yeah. And that's really helpful to us. Very good, very good, Sanjeev. Adam, anything on AI? What, how, how does no, good question. Canadian lottery look at it? Uh, not yet. However, uh, definitely in the lottery industry, you know, today all of, almost a good percentage of our uh, sales is still through, you know, convenience store or gas station, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to really get better at knowing our players and be able to, you know, we have, we have lots and lots of data on, you know, all of the tickets and what they're buying, but, you know, I can see us leveraging AI to better understand that data and help us, you know, position so that we're selling our games and our products where the players want to play, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, so, um, final question to each one of you um, is, why did you choose HP Services as your partner? You, within the time, you gave some in inferences to it uh, as your partner. And what is, are you going to do next? other than signing the PO or something like that, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so let's start with you, Chris, yeah. Yeah, uh, like I said, we had a baseline for data analytics, but we needed really the end-to-end -end service that HPE could provide us, along with an efficient and scalable private cloud. Um, and that's, like, we don't have, we're an esports organization, we're doing pretty well, but we're not doing, you know, as well as a Premier League football club, so our budgets are much, much smaller. So we need something that can modulate we can scale it up when we need to during the season. We can scale it down when we only want to focus on you know, pro matches or maybe in a certain practice. Um, and then we also play in four different titles or sports. And so our teams can only focus on so much at one time, right? And being able to work to build foundational tools that we then can scale across our teams is really important for us. So um, you know, that, was, that was really the reason why HPE and HP Services felt like a great fit for us. They provide a solution, they provide a professionalism, and really actually a little bit of advisory and consulting on some open source tool sets that we could incorporate into some of the things that we're trying to do. Yeah, there is an evil genius uh, demo uh, out there in the services section, so if you all have time, just visit it. It's fascinating, it's, it's fun as well. Yeah. As, far as, as far as what's next, sorry. Um, you know, for us, continue to work on the models we've built, but when we look at esports, right, people are playing video games all across the globe, millions and millions of players, and the ability to scout and identify talent and allow accessibility to all, whether whatever your background, wherever you're from, I think is really key to our mission, as well as to what we believe esports should be. And so, you know, if you imagine you were an NBA team, right, and you're getting granular data on a game at the Chase Center, um, a game at Rucker Park, maybe your kid's elementary school, or like Steph Curry's backyard, 
Like we get that for every game played across the globe, right? And so there's probably a, a million pros out there who never get discovered, or we don't you know, know the qualifications that make a great player. And using with HPE, we can use AI to help us get there and narrow that swath of millions of gamers down to a couple hundred that we can then actually go scout. Very good. Sanjeev. Yeah, I think I've sort of, you know, spoken a bit oh, about our partnership yeah. and, and with, with services. I think, you know, we, we we're still on a journey with HP, uh, with HP services for sure. And uh, we really enjoy our relationship with HP. They, as I said, they augment us as, as a team, which I think is really good. It allows us to scale up and scale down when, when, we, when we require. I think in what's next in terms of our, our partnership with, with services is I think we're going to reimagine the complete care package. Okay. What is it? You know, what does it give us? And how can we make the most of that to really align with the things that we're doing in those sort of segments of what we work with with HPE? Okay. I think we're, we're having active discussions. Johnny's here as my account manager. We're having active discussions with Matt Harris about what, what actually, what can we do a bit differently, you know, with, with, with the complete care package? Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Adam. Yeah, I think uh, just, just to add, I mean, what, why do we choose HP services? And I think what Sanjeev said just, you know, hit the nail on the head for me is, you know, they, when we, HP's, you know, they feel like one of our team, right? They're part of, part of our team. Uh, we work very close to them. And then the, the relationship we have with the partner, right, uh, to bring in that additional technical expertise, whether that's through HP or another vendor, uh, has worked extremely well. And I, I like what you said, because it's, it's exactly the way I feel about our services team that we have in Canada, where we do the lottery, is, you know, it's like they're a member of the team, right? Um, the other thing that's worked really well is, you, as you said, Pradeep, you know, it, it's a partnership. It's a two-way, right? So there's certain things that maybe didn't, you know, work out one way or another. And you know, HPE has been excellent at, um, you know, listening and taking feedback um, so that we can improve things and work together as a, you know, better collaboration to move forward. So, um, you know, the fact that you know they actually. We've seen changes when we've provided feedback and things have improved. Not, not, you know, nothing, nothing's ever perfect, right? So um, the fact that that feedback is taken and then you know, changes are made is, is great, right? So, um, and then what's next for us? Uh, so we're in the process of moving our, we've moved one data center to Equinix. We're in the process of moving the next one uh, into Toronto and it's about 1,200 miles or 2,000 kilometers for our UK and Canadian friends. Um, so we don't, we don't have, from, from 2,000 kilometers from our nearest IT staff. So we're going to expand, or we're looking to expand our GreenLake managed service um, so that you know, GreenLake can manage that environment for us when we don't actually have staff there. And we went through the process of you know, the GreenLake managed service, and there was a whole racy thing that we went through on you know, what do we, kind of as the video said, right? Every customer is unique. So you know, we went through the process of what do we want GreenLake to manage and what do we want to manage? And it was very, very customizable to figure out, you know, all right, you know, firmware down, you guys are going to handle. Hypervisor up, we'll handle. But you know, you could get into the details, and it was very, very customized on you know what's going to work for us. So, very good, very, very informative. Uh, really appreciate you being here, and it's more than our PowerPoint slides. This makes all the difference, right? Because they want to hear, because all our customers are on a similar journey to you are. So, um, very good, appreciate it. Thank you, Chris, nice. Sanjeev, and Adam. I appreciate it. Let's play the, um, Thank you. Thank you. the lottery video, please. Thank you. The retail experience in the world is changing, so we need to adopt and change on how we deliver our products and get them in the hands of the players that we want to serve. Western Canada Lottery Corporation, we enable the services that allow lottery products to be sold in the three provinces of uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and also our northern provinces. Technology is the backbone of the lotteries and how they operate. Through COVID, we were able to innovate, and we stood up a brand new online subscription service. So if you wanted to play a lottery and didn't want to miss a draw, through our online platform, you can now go in and subscribe. At the end of the day, really, we don't want to have any impact to the customer. It's been a very smooth process to transition all of our compute, all of our storage over to HPE GreenLake. With HPE GreenLake having the additional capacity and flexibility to expand when we need, and if our application team needs a new environment, we can quickly spin that up and uh, get it in a pilot and test mode much, much faster. 
We added new games and new features to our environment with the flexibility to stack up and add more compute when required to our environment. With data and the analytics we're going to get out of it, uh, it's really going to allow us to take more calculated risks and uh, really inform our business decisions on how we offer new games and new services to our players. Security is of the utmost importance for our organization, for sure. With HP GreenLink, having the technical advisors know our environment and know the technology and be able to update the firmware and keep things current um, absolutely plays a big role in security. And the best part for me is when I show up to our executive meeting uh, and they want to pitch an idea about adding a new game or a new something, uh, I know that we have the capacity and flexibility to ramp up when we need. Who doesn't want to win the lottery? That's pretty cool. Thanks, Adam. Uh, so, as we go away, there are three key points I want to make, right? Uh, key takeaways um, from today. Uh, one is, I think, as I said, and I'm repeating from last year, uh, whenever you are getting on a transformation project, make sure that you have the support and sponsorship from the top. From the top. Don't ignore that is so crucial in making things happen because you will hit road bumps, right? Whether you like it or not in large transformation projects and you want your CEO. In, in our case, I mean, I do go to Antonio before I do anything and are you with me, Antonio, right? I asked that about two times and I would also send him an email to make sure he is on board, right? Uh, so it, it, it's always an important thing. The second thing is what we discussed today, the operating model. Take it seriously because sometimes we get caught up in a day-to-day -day bus and it is very Im important to relook at, reimagine the way you want to do the operating model. Because as you acquire technology, as I said, the previous operating model may not be what's required for the future. The third thing I think uh, you do not have to think you are on this journey alone. As I said at the beginning of it, we HPE is the coach here to help you be your partner on this journey. You heard from Sanjeev clearly how that operating model and the whole journey has worked together in partnership, and we are true partners with our customers. That's what we really value and we want to make it happen. So have a blessed day. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.